Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. There is another baseball card release right around the corner this week. We have Topps Finest 2021 coming out. It is a long running set, but the question that's going to be on most collectors' minds is is this a set that you should get or one that you're going to regret? Well, it's time to find out in this One Cent Sports Cards. 2021 Tops Finest Set Guide and Review. So a little bit of time has passed since our last set release, which was Tops Tier 1, but here we are in June with a new set, 2021 Tops Finest coming out this Friday, June 4th. And what we're trying to find out in this set guide in review is how good Topps Finest really is this year. We do that with the exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. What is that, you ask? Well, let me explain. First of all, it is the most in depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. We break the set down into 10 different categories. Everything from how good the auto checklist is, all the different parallels, the inserts, what the overall cost value is, card quality, everything in each one of those categories is worth one to 10 points. Then what we do is we take all of those points, we add them all up, and the set is given a one to five star rating based upon how all of those categories pan out. And then we compare the 2021 set with how good it was in 2020 when we reviewed the 2020 set. Then we compared that set to all of the other 2021 sets that have been released so far. So we know how good it compares to all of the other sets that have come out this card collecting season. So before we begin, one more thing. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, throw over the first, hit that. That's the best way that you can show support for the channel. And be sure to subscribe so you can get all of these set releases. And if you want to be the first one to view the set releases, be sure to hit that notification bell so you can be notified first. So let's dig in. The 2021 Tops Finest Set Guide and Review is going to cover off on a bunch of different things. We're going to do the set highlights, kind of give you the general overview of what the set offers, tell you the different buying formats you can get it in, what the key cards are, what the key parallels, variations, inserts, and autos are. We'll dig into all the parallels on those as well. And then I'll even tell you what teams I would target for breaks if you're buying into breaks. Then I'll give you my opinions on what I think the set positives are, what I think the negatives are. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we'll find out how good this set really is. And then I will show you all of the 2021 set rankings to date so we can see how it stacks up to all of the other sets. So the set highlights. The first thing to know about Topps Finest, it's a bold modern chromium set that really has changed history for the industry. And we'll go into how it did that in a few moments. It's a 125 card base set checklist and cards number 101 through 125 are all going to be high numbered limited short prints. It is in its 29th year of production, started way back in 1993, and it changed the industry because it was the first set to introduce the all being refractor. This set was really the one that kind of changed the industry into what it has become today. For this year, there's a 16 color parallel rainbow, which is twice as big as the rainbow was last year. So a lot more parallels we're going to find this year compared to last year. And it is a chromium set with an abstract and modern design. So as you can see over there with the Alec Bohm on the right, very, very modern set. It does not use action shots. It's more of an abstract art piece than it is a action shot. And it is also a hobby only release. So in the release, you've got per box, you've got a master box that has too many boxes, very much like it's been for the past few years. And each one of those mini boxes has an auto. So each master box is going to give you two autos. The set focuses on players from today. There are no prospects in the set. It is very much today's active players and rookies. 
And this year, which is new, there's a rookie design variation subset that is available. That's what the Alec Bohm is over on the right. Mike Trout is also featured in the set with a finest career subset. They did each row last year. This year we get Mike Trout and those cards are going to be die cut cards. Also returning this year is the mystery autograph. Uh, My guess, it's the reason why I had the Fernando Tatis cards in the beginning of this video. I think I have nothing to prove it, but I'm guessing Fernando Tatis is going to be the mystery autograph this year. I could be wrong. If I am, comment below. Let me know who you think it is. Finally, we also have retired stars that are going to be featured throughout many of the subsets. So if you like retired stars, you're going to find them in some of the subsets as well. We also have the finest masters subset which brings back the 1997 subset design. We'll show you what that looks like here in a few moments. So what are the different buying formats? Well, first you can get a case. Uh, A case is gonna have eight boxes. There's 12 packs in a box, five cards per pack. So that's gonna get you 480 total cards. The cost on that is running you about $1,900 right now. So a fairly high cost per card on this of $3.96, but you are guaranteed 16 autographs, eight of the rookie design variations and 32 different parallel refractors. If you don't have 1900 bucks to drop, I understand you can get a hobby box. The hobby box is going to be 12 packs, five cards per pack, 60 total cards. They're right around 240 on the internet right now. So your cost per card creeps up to four bucks. You're going to get two autos, one of the rookie design variations, and four guaranteed refractors as well. So what are the key cards in 2021 Tops Finest? Well, first of all, let's cover off on who the rookies are. We've got Ryan Mountcastle, Nick Madrigal, Alec Bohm. We saw that one earlier. Joe Adele is in the set. You've got Jake Cronenworth in the set. Mr. Brian Hayes, who should be coming off the IL this week as well. Excited about that. You've got Jazz Chisholm in the set. Dylan Carlson and Luan Diaz finally gets his first solo rookie card. So you'll find that in Top's Finest this year. You, and you've got Casey Mize. And finally, Christian Pache. For the parallels, autos, inserts, there are no relics, but we put relics up there. Anyways, the ones that people are going to be looking for, those high number short prints, that's cards number 101 to 125. You've got the refractor parallels and, of course, the parallel autos. That's going to be the big chase in most of these. You've got eight new colors this year. Should be fun to chase those. We'll cover off on what the different colors are and what the number breakdown is on those as well here in a few moments. Uh, we've got the finest career die cuts and autos featuring Mike Trout. That's what you see over on the right. It's going to be a cool looking die cut card, all with Mike Trout. Then we also have the finest legacies inserts. That's going to feature a lot of your retired stars. And of course, the rookie design variations. And there are some autos you can find in that as well. We also have the finest moments autos. That's going to be retired grades plus some current stars that you'll find in there. And this year, you've got the finest original buyback auto. So there's going to be buybacks of cards, Topps Finest cards in the past. Some of those are really nice, some really nice names in that set checklist for our parallels. We have a bunch of different parallels to cover off on. First, you can get a refractor. That's going to be one in three packs. We have Sky Blue this year, which is going to be numbered to 300. The purple refractors, each numbered to 250. And then we also have the purple aqua vapor refractor numbered to 250. You've got aqua refractors to 199, aqua shimmer refractors to 175, blue refractors to 150, the green speckle refractor to 125, and there's more. We have the green refractors to 99, the rose gold refractor to 75, the gold 50, the rose gold mini diamond refractor to 50, orange number to 25, red to 5, Purple Pink Vapor Refractor number two, three. And of course, the always sought after Super Fractors. Those are all going to be one of ones. So what are the inserts in 2021 Tops Finest? Well, we start with the 1997 Finest Masters. That's what you see over on the right. That is a throwback to the 1997 set. There's 25 cards in that set. They're going to land one in three packs. There are parallels of gold, red, and super fractor available in those as well. 
Then you have the finest career die cuts. That's the Mike Trout cards, 10 cards in that. You're going to find those in one of three packs, also with parallels, gold, red, and super fractor. You've got the finest legacies insert set, 20 cards in that subset, one in three packs, parallels to gold, red, and super fractor as well. And then finally, you have the finest rookie design variations, 20 cards in that set. They land one per hobby box, a one in 12 packs, parallels of gold to 50, red to five, and a super fractor one of one. Now on to the autographs. For our autographs, we have the 1997 Finest Masters autographed versions. There's 14 cards in that set. The parallels change up a little bit here. You've got an orange to 25, a red to five, and a super fractor one of one. Then you have the finest autographs, which is what you see over on the right. There's the Cabrian Hayes. There's probably what you're going to find in most of the hobby boxes. There's 81 cards in that set, and there is a large parallel breakdown of blue, green, green wave, gold, orange, orange wave, red, red wave, and super fractor one of one. We also have the Mike Trouts, the finest career die cut autographs, 10 cards, each of those cards will be a one of one. So 10 different one of one Mike Trout's available in this set. We also have the finest legacies autographs and that is 10 cards as well. I don't know why it says retail there, but you can get the finest legacy autographs, 10 cards in that set. We have more autographs as well. We've got the finest moments autographs. Those are going to be 22 cards. You can see what it looks like over on the right with the King Griffey Jr. You've got a gold, red, and super fractor parallel breakdown. And then we also have the finest mystery redemption autograph. Don't know who that's going to be. We do know that it's going to be numbered to 99. And it will be a redemption that you get. Uh, so you won't get the autograph. You'll have to redeem it. I'm putting my money that it is Fernando Tatis Jr., which would be awesome. Could be someone else though. Who knows? Uh, the finest original buybacks, there's going to be 10 cards and 10 signers, really. The lots of different cards, but 10 signers, and they'll all be numbered to 99. And finally, we have the finest rookies design variations autographs. There's going to be seven cards in that subset with a large parallel breakdown as well of blue, green, green wave, gold, orange, orange wave, red, red wave, and super fractor as well. So, now that we know who the autographs are, we know what the inserts are, we know what the base set checklist is, who are the teams that we should be targeting in breaks? Well, I've got six of them for you. I've got two sleepers. I've got who I think is the best, who's got the most autos. So let's dig right in. First of all, a surprise. I actually think the best team that you can target is going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. And here's why. They've got five base cards, which in a 125 card set is a pretty good number. Um, they've got two different rookie cards in there, and they have a surprising amount of autos. And a lot of those are from the rookies, of course. There's 10 different autos, and there's also a good amount of inserts you can pull out of there. There's five different inserts. So comment below. Let me know if you think the Phillies aren't the best team. But if you're looking for the most autos, you've got the Atlanta Braves. They've got six base cards, three rookie cards, 11 autos, and three inserts. I think the Philadelphia Phillies have a little bit of a better team checklist than the Atlanta Braves in this. That's why I'm giving the slight edge to the Phillies on here. But if you're looking for a ton of autos, look no further than the Braves. If you want a solid choice, you can never go wrong with the New York Yankees. Seven base cards, two rookie cards, seven different autos you can pull out of here, and four different inserts however which team do i think holds the most value well this one i think goes without saying it's going to be the los angeles angels they've got five base cards one rookie card that's joe adele and 17 different autos a lot of them are mike trout so if you want mike trout autos plus because of the insert that they have for mike trout it's just a ton of angels cards that should come out of here if you get lucky get a mike trout auto this is a great set if you want to ch uh, chase a mike trout auto this would be a set that you would definitely want to buy into. Lots of value with the Angels. If you want a sleeper, I'm going with the Chicago White Sox. They've got nine different base cards, and four of those base cards are the short prints. They do have one rookie card. Not a ton of autos, but they've got five autos, though, which isn't bad in this set. And they've got two different inserts. But the White Sox, you're going to get plenty of cards. You're going to get plenty of White Sox out of this set. And then my other sleeper, again, 
They've been a sleeper all season. I've got the Miami Marlins. They're my sleeper in almost every set. They've got four base cards. Every one of them is a rookie card. They've got six different autos and three inserts. The Marlins, all season long in almost every set, have been a nice sleeper team to get. If some of those rookies pan out here in a few years, could be a team that you can buy in low and lots of different rookies. They always end up on different teams eventually anyways, so don't sleep on those Marlins. So what are the set positives of Top's Finest? Well, I like that it's a set that has a rich tradition and it's sought after year after year. Um, it's a very popular set. It's it's a chromium set. It's got tops. It's got the logos. It's got everything you would want. If you like a modern card design, this is a set that I really think you would be interested and happy with. The other thing I like about it is that they did expand the Parallel Rainbow for 2021. I thought it was a little short last year. I've always thought it's a little bit short. So the Parallel Rainbow expands for 2021. It doubled in size, which is kind of neat. We also have the rookie design variations highlighting most of the rookie card chases that you're going to be looking for in 2021. Not all of them. I know everyone's waiting on Jared Kelnick. However, he's not in this set, but... Most of the rookie cards that you're going to look for in 2021 are going to be found in this set. And those rookie design variations, I think, are going to hold value because they only land one per hobby box. And then did someone say a lot of Mike Trout autos? Yeah, there's a lot of them in this set. You can pull a ton of different ones. You can pull the... The die cut ones, but he's got more than just the die cut ones in there. So if you like Mike Trout, I love Mike Trout. This is a great set to buy into. I also like that it's got a beautiful card design this year. I think it's better than last year's and last year's was fantastic. It's always one of the nicest looking cards of the year. Nice modern design to it. A little bit more of a Panini-esque design, but with a lot more class in my opinion. And then I also like that there was a lot of noticeable updates for the insert sets from last year. A ton of new stuff, a ton of stuff to get excited about. So overall, so a lot, a lot of positives, but there's also negatives to Top's Finest, which we'll cover off on those now. One, it's not really a set that is geared towards set collectors. Yes, it has the high number short prints, which makes it somewhat challenging, but overall, it's a smaller checklist, only has 125 cards. If you like chasing rookies, it's a great one, but not a great set collector set. And then the other thing is the main autograph, the, the, the finest autographs. There's a lot of young stars on the checklist, not necessarily rookies, but some of them are, and some of them have autos only and aren't in the base set checklist, but there's not a lot of superstar autos. Um, there's some of them in there, but not a ton. And when you look at the top's finest autographs, which is the main autograph set that you're going to find in most of these boxes, some of them are names that you're going to go, eh, for a box that cost me 240 bucks, I wish I would have got a better auto. And that's just a fact. Um, unfortunately, they do not have a lot of the superstar veterans that I would have liked to have maybe seen in Top's Finest. The other thing, speaking of cost, the cost of these boxes has crept higher. Your cost per auto is over $100 this year. If you're up at 240, these prices may come down here in a few weeks. But for now, your cost per auto is over $100, which I think is a first for Top's Finest. So it's unfortunate that the cost of boxes has gone up. Stuff has leveled off here a little bit, but I do think that this is a little high for Top's Finest. And then the other thing is the production delay, because this set was delayed by about two or three weeks. That worries me on the quality control front. Topps' quality control in 2021 has been atrocious at best. A lot of miscut cards, a lot of quality control issues. And I'm worried that, again, because of the production delay, they're rushing stuff to the market because they're having delays in getting the supplies to them. And they're rushing stuff out. And I think it's costing them on quality control. That's been a problem throughout most of the sets that they have released in 2021. And until they fix it, I'm going to keep calling it out. The other thing, I love that they expanded the Parallel Rainbow, but what that means is there's a higher production run this year over last year. They've doubled the rainbow size. Do I think that they've doubled the amount of cards that they're producing in Top's Finest? It's possible. Just know this. There's a lot more Top's Finest this year than there was last year. So 
Tops cashing in on the popularity of the hobby. It's not necessarily a good thing for scarcity and value in the long run. So I love that there's more color. However, some of that comes at a cost, literally a cost of value. So that brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking. How does 2021 Tops Finest rank this year? Well, again, we're going to go to our five star ranking system and this is how tops finest comes out first of all here's our 10 categories we rate everything on a one to ten scale so uh, we'll start out with the appeal i think that the appeal because it's chromium and because we've got a ton of rookies it's got a pretty wide appeal maybe not quite as much as tops chrome would tops chrome obviously super extremely popular but overall i'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 the base checklist, not a bad checklist, ton of different rookies. Most of the rookies you're going to be looking for in 2021, a lot of good current stars and whatnot. So the base set checklist, I give a 7.5. For the inserts and relics, I went ahead and gave it a 7. There are no relics, but the inserts were very updated this year. Lots of different new things that we can dig into and find in packs. And a lot of the tried and true stuff has remained. So I think overall, it's pretty strong. I go ahead and give it a 7. For the parallels and variations, I'm going to give it an 8.5. When you double the rainbow parallel, I like it. I get that it hurts value a little bit, but I like that they've done that in a chromium set. I give it an 8.5. For the auto checklist, I'm a little underwhelmed with the top's finest autograph checklist. However, there are a lot of retired grades that you can find in some of the other subsets, the rookie variation subset. Obviously, that's going to be a good one. So when we look at all of the different auto checklists overall, I go ahead and give it a 6.5. For pack odds and production, I think production's obviously up this year. Uh, you can't double the rainbow and keep the odds the same. So I believe that the production is going to be much higher. But Top's Finest is not, but it's a hobby only release. It is not mass, mass produced like say Heritage or some of the flagship sets. So I'll go ahead and give it a five. For the card quality, I love Top's Finest cards. They look fabulous. However, I'm only giving it a seven and I actually want to go lower, but I'm saving face because it's finest. Until Top's production and quality control does a better job at ensuring that over 99% of the cards are coming out uh, clean cut, as centered as possible. I am so tired in 2021 of seeing miscut subsets and whatnot for cards that cost as much as they cost. So I am giving it a seven because it's top's finest, but for the most part, the quality control on tops has been atrocious. And until it's fixed, I'm going to be given these low scores until the, until it's fixed uh, historical value. I go ahead and give it a seven. This is very much a sought after pro a product. It sells well on the secondary market. The cards are beautiful. It is not quite as popular as Topps Chrome or say Bowman Chrome first and stuff, but it does hold its own. So I give it a seven and the artistic value. It has become known as Topps' modern design. It's an iconic set. It's been around forever. I go ahead and give it a seven. Great looking cards this year. And cost value, I went ahead and gave it a 4.5. I believe the set, the boxes are a little bit overpriced for what they offer, but that's every set this year. So until the prices come down to a little bit more of to the value of what can actually be found in an average box, my cost value on most of the sets in 2021 has been rated pretty low. I do like that they give you two autos. You're getting four parallels per box. Um, so not terrible. I give it a 4.5. So we're going to add all these up. And what does Top's finest one cent sensational set ranking come out to? Well, its final rating is a 67.5, which puts it squarely as a middle of the road four star set. It is a very nice set overall. There's the Mike Trout stuff. It's chromium stock. We've got an expanded parallel rainbow. We have a ton of retired autographs that you can find in here, a ton of new inserts. We've got the throwbacks to 1997, lots of different stuff to dig into here. Lots of nice rookies we can pull out of here. But that being said, it's a little expensive. I'm 
reserving judgment on quality control. And I believe that the production on this overall has gone up, which is going to hurt a little bit of the value. So that dropped the score a little bit. But overall, I don't think you can go wrong with Top's Finest. I don't think you'll regret buying the boxes. You'll probably get some nice autos, probably a parallel auto in most of the boxes, maybe not all of them, but I believe you'll at least get one in, you know, half in one out of two boxes, which would be great. So, how does that compare to the 2020 Top's Finest set? Well, in 2020, we gave Topps Finest a set score of 70. So it falls back a little bit. A lot of that is because of cost value and card quality. That's really about the only difference between this year and last year. So it falls back a little bit, but still, like I said, a very nice four-star set. One that I would definitely recommend if you like Chase and Rookies. If you like Chromium Stock, all of those are going to be great for Topps Finest. So how does Topps Finest ranked to date with all of the other sets that have been released in the 2021 baseball card season. Well, it is fifth out of 13 possible sets. Now this doesn't include uh Bowman first edition. This doesn't include some of the online exclusive sets that have come out. This is major sets, but tops finest comes in five out of 13. So a highly rated set so far coming out for 2021. It comes in just below Topps Tribute, which had a 68.5. Bowman Baseball leading the way with the 77.5. And we had Leaf Lumber drop off the top 10 in this latest set rankings to date list. And to round out our top five, top series one is still in there. You've got Topps Inception still at three. And of course, Topps Tribute at four. Topps Tier One drops out of the top five down to six. And you can see how the rest of the list plays out. So, like I said before, if you like these set reviews, be sure to throw over to first. Hit that like button for me. That's the best way that you can show me that you appreciate the content and it really helps on the YouTube algorithms. Um, and be sure to subscribe because we do all of these all the time. June is going to be a very busy month for uh, set releases. So we've got a bunch of ones coming out. Top Series 2 is coming out right around the corner next week. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. And with that, guys... As always, I hope you have a fantastic time opening up Top's Finest. I hope you have good luck on your personal pack pulls of Top's Finest. And before I sign off, always be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.